Good morning, everybody. We'll go on and get started. We had more people who registered, had about 30 people registered, and I'm sure people will hop on, but we'll go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Paula Whitaker. I am with Hawaii Autism Foundation, and um, I just want to introduce myself and the people who have been kind enough to be with us today. Um, I do want to let you know that this session is being recorded, and after the session, we will send you the recording for your reference, as, long, as well as any uh, resources that are shared in the meeting. Those will be emailed to you as well. And all of the videos can be found at all times on our website, which is hawaiiautismfoundation.org. Under the videos tab, you can find those um, at any time. Um, I would like everybody to take just a minute to turn the chat feature on. Um, if you have any questions along the way, then please type them into the chat feature and we'll make sure we circle back to those after our experts give a little presentation. Um, so just turn your chat feature on really quickly and you can either ask that question yourself when the time comes or we can read it for you. Um, I did want you to know that we did receive some questions that um, were great questions but were more relevant to things that we have had past meetings on. So what I am going to do is share in the chat really quickly um, some information about our past topics. So if you asked a question about IEPs, about adult services like day programs and PAB workers, things like that, we have all that information. Um, the videos are acceptable, accessible and if you don't wanna watch the whole video, I'll be happy to email you the resources from the meeting. So just email me at that address if you have any of those questions and I'll be glad to share it with you. Um, I would like to take a second to introduce our experts. We have three really great people to help us with this today. So first is Dr. Paki'i Belez. You wanna say hi, Dr. Belez? <laughs> and um, she is a neurology, she specializes in neurology. She's also a caregiver of someone with autism, um, a young adult with autism, and she runs a support group um, for Alzheimer's, and so she is a great resource for this. We also have Anissa Wiseman. Are you on, Anissa? There she is. Um, she's with NAMI, and so that is the treasure trove of information right there. And then we have Dr. Catherine Takeda Wong. Where's there she is too. She's a naturopath, a naturopathic physician. So we're very glad to have all of these people with us. And I think they're going to be able to give us a variety um, of resources and strategies to help us deal with anxiety and stress during what is a very stressful time. So I'm going to throw it to um, Dr. Bales, if you would. And um, we will, they're each going to do a small presentation and then we will answer any questions. So thank you. Sorry, thank you for unmuting me, Paula. <laughs> I appreciate that. Oh, okay, can everybody see my screen? Okay. So, um, I mean, I just want to say thank you for letting me come and be a part of this, especially uh, to Paula. I feel like, um, I don't know, a lot of you are probably experts and, and know a lot of this. So uh, my in intention is just to kind of, I guess, give a perspective from, you know, as, as a caregiver um, from my story, because I know a lot of you are well-versed in uh, resources and where to go and, and things. and and know people like Paula and Sarah and Kelly and you know people that I turn to for help and um, appreciate everything that they can share with me. So I will get started and um, Paula jump in anytime if, if you need me to. But so this was the first slide I would want to start off. So this is Hope Hill Clunny, um, my nephew and our journey you know is kind of I'll just give a quick background. Our journey is a little different. That's John my my other half on um, Hope Hill's uh, uncle and it's surrounded by a lot of the organizations that we turn to for help or organizations that Hope Hill Clinic is a part of or have played a real pivotal role in helping us along through his journey and helping us so Hope Hill Clinic is my nephew um, I'm not his mother but I have been involved in his care since the day he was born I was at his birth um, and after my brother who's his 
father had to relocate for work, um, we, the mother and I um, had split our time with Ho Peel and um, her and I would remain great friends. But Ho Peel Plenty, after I returned from the mainland, came to live with John and I uh, permanently and full time. And so um, from there, we, we, we started on, on this, on this journey and um, it has been a great one full of a lot of grateful and welcoming challenges but it's been exciting and so my background just really quickly is i'm um, in geriatric neurology uh, and so i also specialize in brain health and la'au lapa'au and then i'm part of the national task group which is the regional trainers on um, not only dementia but intellectual developmental disabilities including autism and so and i shared this slide because I'm not only a caregiver for Ho Pio Plani, but also for my father who is an end stage dementia, but Ho Pio Plani and my father were like peas in a pod. And so um, Ho Pio Plani takes a really leadership role in taking care of his uh, grandfather also. So this slide will just go, I'm really not gonna get into it. This was just, and I'm sure all of you are very much aware of what is going on in the brain of your, of your children, but those are just some areas that are affected. So now we're talking about stress and COVID-19 and what is all of this? Oh, no, sorry, the phones are going off. So, um, you know, for caregivers and even for like an Ace Hopio Plenty and some of his um, friends, it's really this, this fear of the unknown, like what is COVID, right? It's the first time the human race has seen this. We're only about four to five months into this. Um, for a lot of us on the medical side, we are still learning every day about these things that we thought were correct in month one, we're realizing, um, you know, need to be adjusted and changed. And so there's a lot of fear going on right now. Um, things that you hear, things that you see, not just on TV, because we talk about turning off, you know, the, um, the TV, but also in the home and the neighborhood, what is the you know, the, the vibe like, what is going on, the change, the instability in home, outside, at school, and all of these programs that they're in. What is the future like for them, for us, and the health, the economy, our relationships? So we're like, COVID has spun us into a time of great uncertainty and instability. So we're looking, of course, our focus is always the safety. How are we processing this information? That was supposed to say routine. Um, how are we balancing things and keeping updated with the latest in information and implement and then implementing that? So issues that we dealt with in this house when COVID hit us. Um, on one side, for me, it was you know at work it slammed us like a wall, and um, things just went crazy as we were trying to implement and make guidelines and catch up with this and protect our community and ourselves and. Everybody watches the news and is pretty much aware of what we are up against. But this was becoming the new norm, especially as everything is transitioning now to this virtual online reality. So it's affecting all of us also as caregivers. And this slide is just from the point of view of what we were going through in this house. So then it hit us in caregiving in terms of my parents, especially my father. A lot of his services had to stop, which then meant John and I were gonna take on all of these you know, roles that were, that were happening. Um, how are we going to adjust with whole Pio Plenty, with the way he was feeling emotionally, um, his issues um, correlating to autism? How were we going to take care of school now? Um, John and I are both essential workers, so unfortunately we can't uh, just you know take off and be at home with him. So with as resources were starting to leave us, and with more on our plate, how were we going to do all of this and make sure that whole Pio Plenty got the emotional support that he needed? So definitely self-care, like I try to tell all my caregivers, but I'm very bad at doing it myself, I'll be honest. But we were looking at a lot of his behaviors that he's dealt with, a lot of behaviors that we started seeing early on in the first week as resources got pulled, as school was put to online, his change in his mood, his attitude, the things he was doing, a little bit of regression. Um, a lot of the isolation was affecting him. He really wasn't used to that. He was used to going out and doing things we were having emotional issues, his uh, face-to-face interactions, and you know his change in his living environment. So the first thing that we decided to do was figure out where all of our resources, and a lot of the caregivers that come in, and a lot of the patients that come in, we really try to tell them, 
focus on it. I, I didn't list all of Oprah Autism because you guys are well versed and Paula has them all up on HAF. But, you know, besides all these other ones on the left, it really was trying to go outside of the norm and, um, and, and find things that, that didn't work. And for like the NTG, they're doing a whole series um, from started last month into next month about how to address these issues during this time. And, you know, I, I, I want to be clear when I say this, now dementia and autism or IDDs are not the same. But what we find is that there is a lot of correlation in the strategies that we use, whether it's for Down syndrome or autism or dementia. And it's a lot of those because I became a, I was immersed into that world earlier. Um, we use a lot of them and we cross over and we use them for the different um, diagnosis and they really seem to cross over and work. And so trying to think out of the box and not just go to websites that are focused on autism or um, intellectual disabilities, but to look at things that are related, just in general cognitive issues, because a lot of the memory issues with autism correlate over to those with dementia and a lot of those um, strategies that we use. And I use these um, same strategies with my father and Hope Hill. And so we kind of cross them over. Now, when we're talking about, we talk whole bit, so I want to start with this, because the first thing that John and I, when we, first we sat down together, and then we decided we need to talk to Hope Peel because Hope Peel watches CNN. It's his, one of his favorite stations ever. Okay. Well, if you guys could hear, Hope Peel joined us and he is not watching it today, but it is one of his, um, his, his go-to news stations. And so one of the first things that we had to do was, was talk to him about it, figure out, you know, what, what is he thinking about this? What does it mean to him? What is his interpretation? Really try to stay away from the doom and gloom verbiage. Um, my gosh, I'm so sorry for the typos. It's very, I apologize, very bad me. But we decided to be very honest with him, to answer his questions, interpret things that he's seen on the news, but to always end on a positive note. Saying that though, we thought about first his reaction to stressful situations, because um, he very much focuses on negatives more than positive. So how is this gonna affect him? And making sure that we understood kind of where he was at so we don't over explain and we just make sure to get what is needed across to him, which I'm sure everybody um, has done. But we're also aware of things like when we're talking about all these guidelines that the state is throwing out, that the national organizations are throwing out, we were very much aware that Hope Hill County was one, not gonna remember that all of them. And if he did, may not do them correctly. So understanding that he is gonna touch his face that when he wears PPE, it might not be um, correct, or that he might not like the mask. So what are other alternatives that we can use to make sure he's safe, um, like he has sanitizer bottles everywhere, um, or you know we have wash stations set up. Uh, we use other things that he feels comfortable with to use as, as masks. Um, and then for a lot of us caregivers, and I know this is, might be a little downer subject, but for a lot of us in the clinics, we are asking families, that despite what type of caregiver you may be, to really start thinking about a backup plan. COVID, we might be reopening the, um, our economy. We may be relaxing, but we do not foresee COVID going away anytime soon. And those were projections that came out to us you know, when COVID first started. And so we're asking families that despite what happens in these next two months, can you please have a backup plan ready? What if you get the virus? or if the one you're caring for gets the virus, what is your backup plan? Not only in terms of what they may need behaviorally, but medications, who can come in the house and take over? How can you isolate out, especially if they need a lot of one-to-one -one care? Because if they go into the hospital, as you know, we are not allowing visits, or for the most part visits to end, um, and in a lot of facilities are, on, are kind of in a, in a lockdown phase. Um, the eight, eight, the eight, AHCD is the Advanced Healthcare Directive, which everybody who's 18 and older should have. And it's been one of our priorities at this COVID state, which um, to make sure that anybody who is 18 and over, despite your cognitive abilities, has one completed or completed by your POA. Because if you or the one you're caring for succumbs to COVID, we would like to very much make sure that we can implement the end of life care that, that is expected or that the person would like. Uh, of course, 
the first thing that we were looking at is his routine and trying to keep him engaged. So these were, we sat down and we wrote it out and these were all of the things that we needed to figure out how to now fit in his daily schedule. Now he's not in school. Now he's not going and Hope Hill County catches the bus to all of his activities or at least majority of them. And so how do we take everything that he was doing on the outside and bring it into the home and make sure that he's engaged, that he's not just, you know, having hours on end of, you know, staring at the TV or walking around the house. So we sat down and we wrote out everything. And this isn't everything, but these are the big pieces. And then we started chunking it out. So it really in short to get through this is because we have to maintain a routine. And again, that's something for autistic as well as um, those with other cognitive issues. Routine is one of the the um, baselines or the backbones of everything that we do. So actually after we broke this down and started deciding, the first thing we did is we may had wrote down a list or had Hope Hill write down a list of all the new things he could do, meaning what other things can you do in the house on your downtime between school? And so he started writing a list. He has ceramics to do. We bought him a ceramics wheel for Christmas. He has his books. He loves going on the internet. So we came up with new internet searches. He has like three video things. He plays cards with my mom, board games. He's now starting to um, cook again. And that came out because Hope Hill County is very unhappy that he can't go to Burger King, Jack in a Box, Taco Bell, and um, get the food that he wants on his usual day out that he takes from us. And so he loves eating fried chicken. And so since he's missing all this food, we decided, well, if you want to eat all of that, then maybe let's, you can start cooking your your food. So that's exactly what he started doing. And now he's, he's happier. Um, he's enjoying dinner more. And so he's having a good time learning how to cook, but taking him back to journaling and painting and always ending the day on positives. So what Hope Hill Clinic does is every day before I leave for work, or if John and I are leaving early the day before, Hope Hill writes out his own schedule for the whole day, what he thinks he should do the times he's going to assign, because we do chunk times and we limit times before we move on to the next activity. And we have hard stops. And when everything stops and two hours with no phone time or screen time or it's family time now. And so we do hard stops. Um, when I say that, it's really flexible hard stops. But he writes out his own schedule. He assigns the times to when he's gonna do everything, his schoolwork, whether it's reading or his papers, when he's gonna do his activities. He can choose the same activity, but every day has to have something new on there, something that he usually doesn't do. Um, he writes in his chores, his time with his grandfather, because he does help us uh, with his grandfather, changing him, bathing him, or feeding him um, when, it's, when he's available. And then from there, Hope Hill Plain picks his choices and what he wants to do, and we just review it with him. We make suggestions, but ultimately in the end, he decides what he is and is not going to do and creates his own schedule. And that way he has some control and, um, and enjoys what he's doing. And then these are just some of the other things we added on for family time, We just, which is a great benefit I have to say of COVID is that families are coming back together. But through that, he's now tried meditation. He's done chair yoga with me, it was really cute. Um, he loves his walks. And so we do that a lot, crafts, and we've all started, the family does his SO exercises with him now. And so for his, for a lot of his behaviors, Hope Peel Honey was going through all of these. So um, I didn't make a lot of slides, but so one of the biggest things was his connection, which was back over here under friends. And so before we found out about all the wonderful virtual resources, uh, on his daily schedule, Hope Peel Honey had to we put in to phone a friend or a family member. And so, um, of course, Jack and Ryan were first on the list. And those were the phone calls that Hope Peel Honey started out with. And then it went to like, um, uh, who else we call his, he called his brother and then all his family members, friends from school, um, and Renee. And so, um, that was, I think, one of the best things. Then we found out about, right, the virtual meetings with Best Buddies and HAF and SAC, and, and that was it. That has been one of the greatest things because he feels like he can see people. There's activities for him to do when he's on it, and we have a good time, too, and if I'm home, I pop in or I, I listen, and he shows me all the crafts he makes, so um, that's great. Uh, and been one of the best things, so I thank you guys for doing that so much. 
Um, and then one of the other things that, that he, a lot of times he likes to focus on what he's missing, what he can't eat, where he can't go. And so we also try to make sure that we can address that and talk about that and do implement other things. So he may not, it might not be the safest and he's very worried about going out and catching it. So he can't have a day out, but you know, what we'll do is we'll drive him into town and drive him around. He can sit in the back of the truck. So it's kind of a, an intermediate way. We make sure that he has his own space when he needs to decompress and have his alone time, which is very important to Opil. So sometimes we're like, come and do this with us. And he's like, mm, nah, that's okay. And turns around and walks right out. <laughs> like, okay, never mind. <laughs> they try to squeeze in some time with him or I just, you know, it's very, blunt, right, and <laughs> straightforward. So very much appreciate that from him and try to implement his calming methods. Um, so when this is happening, we got in touch with his psychologist and psychiatrist to make sure that, you know, we had the tools that we needed if things came up. And for him, it's listening to music and taking walks. He loves walks. Um, he likes to just put on his earphones and just, and, I mean, he can walk and be gone for like two hours. So as long as he has his cell phone on him, be safe. We're, we're all good with that. And then just trying to keep him engaged so that he's not, you know, not having anything, anything to do. Sorry, if you see me looking, it's because he's making faces at me. But so how do we deal with behavior? So this is a tool that we kind of use. Now, everything on this slide might not be relevant to you, but we try to focus on like the unmet need or the illness. And then the caregiver interaction, how, what are we doing? How are we acting and the environment? Like, could that need be met or not, is it not being met because of maybe something that we are not doing or could be doing, or is it more the environment? Do I need to turn off that television? Do I need to pull the phone? Is he understimulated? Is he too stimulated? Do we have to adjust what's going on? Um, as a care, you know, for us, for John and I, we need to make sure we, we are there and we're supporting him because one of the biggest things that was really hard was, you know, when school left, yes, he still attends school, but then now John and I are trying to figure out who's the school teacher and who's doing all the schoolwork. And so, well, and before we get to that, because I, I, I went on a tangent, we also use this tool to look at managing behaviors. And this is something that we show um, families and parents that come in, whether it's dementia, uh, whether it's, um, autism or Down syndrome, you know, a lot of other things is that we're always trying to identify down at the bottom is, so when a behavior happens, like we all know, there's something that happened before it to cause the behavior. It didn't just come out of nowhere. So what can we do to identify it? Then we make a plan to address it. And as we all know, sometimes it works great. And we're like, so excited. High five. We figured it out. And other times we're like, damn, kind of missed that one. And let's reassess. So Identifying, making the plan, reassessing, um, looking at the behavior, you know, what happened before it. And then if the plan works great, if it doesn't, to kind of step back and relook at it. And we try to, you know, look at all the websites you have, all the resources, but, you know, do out of the box. Like, oh, Pio Kwani, he loves bowling, but we can't go to a bowling alley. And I have no idea what happened to the bowling set that before we moved into this house. So how can we create a bowling alley, right? So we just take some plastic bottles and um, grab the beach ball or toilet paper roll or anything soft. And we create our own bowling alleys in um, the kitchen and, you know, have a, you know, and then we all compete against each other. Usually he wins. I think it's, I think it's juiced, but he's a good bowler. So I'm happy. Happy with, and you know, I have to tell you guys the story. When he started bowling for SO, um, you know, John and I were trying to figure out who was going to be his partner, and I am not the best partner. And my nephew came up to me and was like, uh, thank you, but I want uncle. <laughs> and straight up looked at me and said, you suck at bowling. <laughs> and I just started laughing. <laughs> I said, you know what? That's very true. So I'm going to let uncle take this one. <laughs> and, so we, and so that's, so John then took over. But, you know, for, um, before I get into other things, I just wanted to step back, you know, for John and I too, we're caregivers to two people. And so a lot of times, you know, it, it gets stressful, as we all know, the emotional, the physical burdens, um, it affects your work, it affects every aspect, right? Your socialization, the way you do everything. 
And so we were really having a hard time in the beginning. We really did. Um, we were, I was out of the house now more than ever. I was gone during the day. I was gone um, during the night. And so John was then having to step in, but his work was calling him in. And so we were really trying to figure out how to balance all of this. So we started, we had to look at our office, um, what we could do at home for tele, to work from home. Um, could I do some of my telehealth visits from here so I can be with Hope Hill Clinic? We have to separate our work desk, but we're still in the same space. So we also have to know like who's using the space at one time and figure out times because I'm doing webinars or I'm in meetings, John's in meetings, and then both of our meetings can hear each other talking about two totally different things. And so sometimes it turns out to be funny, we kind of crack up. But how did we divide and conquer our household chores, our caregiving duties? Like basically I take the week, Monday through Friday with Hope Hill and John takes the weekends. So that's how he ended up being with like Special Olympics and the best buddies. And then I did like more of the Toastmasters and everything else, but it became hard too because, um, now that I, I can't step away from work, so I very much have to start figuring out how to change my schedule because I needed to attend class with Hope Hill because a lot of the resources are online to understand. I now, you know, the uh, writing center can't get to him every time, so I need to read the papers, attend the writing center um, visits, uh, talk to the teacher about what is happening. So just like many of you, it then also became a teacher and how do I figure this all in? So John and I do a lot of check-ins with all of those subjects, but how are you doing? What do you need? What do you need from me? How can I better support you? This And try to figure it out, because the two of us are, you know, trying to be here and be everywhere else we need to be. And we also understand that the way we are with each other, if we're kind of snippy, or we're kind of mad, affects Hope Hill and his mood, as well as my dad and everyone else in the house. And so we, there was a week where it was, not gonna lie, it was very difficult between us. I think we were both kind of getting at each other. And so we really, we had to stop. We had to find space for ourselves and take a moment to decompress before we came back together. And then after that, it's just real simple things. Like we, the other night, we were both working late. I think it was Friday. And so it was like 12 o'clock. And um, yes, we had a nightcap, but we, Michael Jackson is one of my favorite and I saw his Bucharest. Stuff. So we threw it up online and we put on the speaker and we watched the whole concert till two in the morning and we danced and jumped around the house. And so we did little things like that. And in the picture is John went to the store and he found that. And so he made a movie night here at home for he and I, and you know, we also ate Ben and Jerry Netflix and chill. So it was very fitting. So it was, it was cute. And I got to tell you that ice cream is very, very good. Uh, yeah, I would eat it again as I watch Netflix. But um, so we make quarantine dates. We try to do funny things or, and then like when he ran errands, he picked that up and gifts. I don't mean buying gifts. Um, we do just little things over here, like for each other, maybe leave a note. Or if I know that he's running behind, I'll go and, you know, make something for him. Or sometimes I'll put together his, like a little snack or a meal, just like little things. John will like sometimes just pick flowers out of like, when he's taking a walk and bring it back. So we just try to, now that we're spending a lot more time together, um, kind of figure out how to still move around that. We also have done couples therapy and do a lot of webinars for stress management and couples thing online and look things up and, um, you know, and take all the resources that we can. And I did want to mention, and I'm so sorry to go back to this, on the left-hand side, everybody might have seen antipsychotics are the last resort. And we really do mean that, and I forgot to address that, and I apologize. Um, you know, when we're talking about medication, it's just everybody decides if they want to use medications or not. Personally, I like non-pharmacological ways or natural ways, which is why I got back into La'al. You know, I learned Western medicine and really was like, I should learn um, more of a natural way or my cultural medicine. And so, you know, we do use both in this house. Um, I will say we use both natural and um, Western medicine in combination. Um, now, when we start to look at strategies, like we already went over building a routine, oh, and I really was not spilling things so good last night. Um, we talk a lot so we can express thoughts and understanding and questions, address our feelings. We use some assertive communication skills um, for all of us in the house. We do use meditation. 
uh, music, which I'm sure everybody is familiar with. Um, Hope Hill Honey has noise canceling headphones also, as well as the white noise to go to sleep. But we also do signal breathing. So he, he does it with us. We have a five minute one or we do a 15 minute one, depending on how stressed everyone is, um, how much we need to decompress. We do have, and I didn't take, scan these in and put up pictures, but I can send it. We do have a caregiver checklist that we go over and it's really a rating skill. Um, and honestly, Hopil does it too because it's self-care and he has to take care of himself. So every, all five of us in the house do this and it really, you rate yourself on how we've been doing so you can kind of see for yourself where you kind of need to jump on a little bit more. Um, we set goals, small goals and then really look at how we're gonna divide and conquer between all of us. We use exercise, not just um, you know endurance and strength, but a lot of stretching. We laugh. At the dinner table, we end always the night with positives. We come to the table with things that we found that aren't the norm. Um, how can we do things? How can we bring things from the outside into the house? Um, and so for a lot of caregivers, that's a lot of, that we spend a lot of time in the clinic talking about outside of the medicine part is, is what kind of things can you now do to keep people engaged? Like, um, you know, if, if there's not safe to go outside and work in the yard, can we bring the yard inside? Can we bring small pots and the dirt inside on, onto the table? Can we learn new games? Like we all played backgammon the other day, but not only can we just find the game, can we play online bingo? Or can we just get a piece of paper and draw out a checkerboard and play checkers that way? Can we play pin the, tail on the donkey and you know and making games like we made a game the other night out of um setting the table and uh, singing and dancing can we make the washing hands um instead of just oh can i wash my hands again auntie's telling me so instead of just the happy birthday song we pick his favorite song and blast it through the house while he washes his hands you know so i'm um, trying to look at, at 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 things like that he loves taking walks so there'll be pictures coming up. We take walks all through our neighborhood, but we've started exploring all the little, like, you know, they, he likes the routine, so he likes to do the same walk. So now we are taking different turns um, and going in different, going up instead of down and taking pictures and stopping and looking at things and um, doing things. He loves music. So we, he, we got, he wanted a CD player. This was the best thing. I haven't seen a CD player since I was in high school and walking around with a portable CD player that, you put batteries in when he wanted one and a CD, a local CD that was like from the nineties. So we got that from him and um, you know, he's been, he's been enjoying that, but it was, it was very different than the rock music that he usually likes to listen to, but, but it kind of worked out. So, and then of course, knowing when to ask for help and who to ask help from. So, you know, and not being afraid to ask for help. Caregivers, a lot of times we don't ask for help. We do it all on ourselves. We put it on ourselves. Um, and of course, we know exactly what to do. So it's hard to take the reins over to someone else. But, you know, understanding that that's part of it, too. And it might, if even if we don't have family and we can't reach out maybe to neighbors right now or to your church community to come in and help, but who else? And so like the people right on, on this call, like Paula and Sarah and Kelly and the other presenters are, you know, great people to just reach out to when you need help or to your, your care team, your medical care team. A lot of my patients have my personal email and my cell phone and are sending me messages, whether they're caregiving for people, uh, for their children or for a parent, and they're asking me messages about things, and I'm you know, totally happy to answer. It doesn't bother me. And so just knowing when you need a break, when to make hard stops, and when you have to put everything else on hold to take just a moment to breathe for yourself, even if you have to shut the door for a moment, of course, as long as you're safe. But shut the door and just take a few breaths and do what you need. And for me, I will put on from YouTube, you can find so many things like the beach on the flat screen and like just close my eyes and listen to the sound of the waves. Um, or, you know, like how we brought the concert in here or we do movie night um, with the popcorns and the candies and everybody finds their spots. Um, the dance parties, the palhanas, the having the family jump on Zoom so we can see each other. Um, and so it, it takes a lot, but there's so much that we can do at this virtual time. There's so much more that we're open to the world. Oh, and if you guys didn't know, we also do museum tiers, tours. 
because most of the museums, even Iolani Palace, as well as across the nation, um, you can do virtual tours in all of the museums. So we have been visiting museums all across the country, and that has been a lot of fun too. So these are some pictures of Hold Peel and the things that he's been doing. So we tried to do arts and crafts. Mayor Kawakami, if you have not been on his Facebook page, got to go to it. So that's how we got to do the tie-dye Easter eggs for Easter. And then um, those are some of his walks, or so exercising, his painting, his crafts. That was Hopil doing yoga. And so I'm just trying to implement new things. On the top left, that's Hopil Kani. I think that was a, that's either, H, I think that was HAF that he's on at that time. And so um, some of the activities he's doing. So for, and these are just really quick ones. I'm not gonna go over them. Um, the picture is pretty self-explanatory. These are not the ones, the other ones that I have, but these are some that I could find pictures. So looking at the stress test, you know, checklist, especially at a time of COVID with uncertainty, where exactly are we at? And what can we focus on? Um, saying no is a big thing and not having to feel like we have to be, right? Superwoman, Superman and do it all. And the meditate, most of my meditation happens at 5 a.m. when the house is quiet and before the sun rises and I can just like, decompress. Um, visualization, that is one of the techniques his psychologist gave him too, visualization, meditation, deep breathing, taking a walk. And so those are things that we use a lot with whole peel that seem to work. Um, taking one thing at a time, prioritizing and not trying to put too many things on the schedule. Um, living a healthy lifestyle, I have to tell you it's been, whole peel plenty has, it's been over a few months. He loves the food that he likes, but over this last year, we have been moving more towards um, not as much meat or more turkey meat and vegan. And it was very hard for him in the beginning, but now he's, we're, I was so surprised we went to Foodland because he does his own shopping and makes his list. We went to Foodland and he found plant-based sausages and he looked at me and he was like, let's try it and put it in the cart. And I was excited. I was like, are you really? What about this? And he was like, no. I was like, all right, all right, all right, all right. We'll just, we'll just start with the sausage. We'll start with the sausage. So um, that, was a, that was fun, and it was a little bit of a win. Uh, for COVID, we used this sphere, kind of just looking at what kind of zone we are in and where we can move to. How can we move from that dark blue circle out to the lighter circles? Excuse me. And so, um, you know, there's a lot a lot going on with the blame placing, getting annoyed and impatient and irritable as we're all you know, at home. Um, but how can we move out and get really more to that, finding a purpose, the growing zone, being grateful and thinking about you know, others and how that we can help each other, which you've seen the community come together as a lot of people are in need of food and the community is swung together. There are so many places um, providing that. Um, and then I'm going to stop real quickly right after this. Oh my gosh. So um, this is just another tool that we use. And then the thinking, instead of thinking, I'm stuck at the house. And then just looking at like being more positive. Not everything is, is being canceled. Um, and just trying to be more positive. And then that was Hope Peel Plenty with the Autism Foundation. And so I'm so sorry, Paula. I can't see the chat too much on here, so I'm not sure if you were chatting or no? No, okay. you're good. Thank you so okay. much, Cookie. That was a lot of really good information. I took so many notes for, um, for Jack, but I appreciate it so much. And I'm going to toss to Catherine now. And Stop. Catherine has got some information for us um, about ways to de-stress, um, looking at it from more of a naturopathic position lens. So Catherine? Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen. Um, let me see, hold on. <laughs> and I um, am also working from home and I've got um, a four-year-old and a six-month-old. <laughs> so just bear with me if they, uh, if they interrupt. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to do my best to, <laughs> to do this with them here. So um, let's see, okay. Okay, let's see, so um, 
So there is a lot of information I'm going to try to go through. And oh, I'm talking, sweetie. <laughs> so, um, so I'm going to be addressing things a little bit more from a medical perspective. Um, and then if you, then all of these slides, um, Paulo will be sending this to you, so you don't have to try to worry about like taking notes or anything. Um, Paulo will just be emailing all this stuff to you guys with the links and everything. So, um, but yeah, definitely, you know, let her know if you have questions, and then I think we have a Q and A period afterwards. So, um, so yeah, today we're talking about, of course, stress and anxiety. And and Paula told me I have ten minutes, so I'm gonna try to go through this as well as I can. <laughs> um, but yeah, do are you ever feeling this way? I mean, that's a big, big issue for all, for a lot of us, as as you all know. Um, or how about this? And so. As you know, I mean, some of the, just some of the stresses, I mean, of course, the financial issues, um, worried about getting COVID-19, everything that, um, and especially having your kids with you all the time. So, um, and especially a lot of the issues that come along with autism as well. So just knowing that you're not alone, that um, Hawaii Autism Foundation, and also I refer a lot of patients to talk, uh, talk about, um, or sorry, uh, the autism community in action, because that's the whole purpose of these groups is that you can know that you're not alone and being able to connect, especially in this time where we're all kind of isolated. Um, but yeah, so today, you know, this is for you if you're feeling nervous or tense or restless, if you're feeling tired or weak, trouble concentrating your thinking clearly, trouble sleeping, if you're experiencing digestive symptoms, that could be a symptom of anxiety, if you're having trouble controlling that worry. And then if stress or anxiety is interfering with your ability to function in a work or home environment or um, interfering or causing problems in your most meaningful relationships. So if you find yourself snapping at your partner or your kids mm -hmm. a lot more, especially because everybody's all cooped up together. Mm -hmm. together. So what you want, of course, is to have less stress and anxiety, and especially for your child with autism, being able to have your child being, being able to adapt to all the stressors that are going on right now. So hopefully these things that I'll share with you will be helpful for that. Um, and then what's standing between where you are now and where you want to be, and a lot of times it's treating the underlying cause and so seeing like this iceberg and that you know we see all of these things up here which is a manifestation, but underneath there could be a whole lot of things underlying the surface. And we can't, of course, you know, change the situation necessarily with, you know, okay, we're all cooped up and everything. Um, but I think, um, you know, just some previous things that were shared are great ideas in terms of, you know, meditation, exercise and everything else. But sometimes there's also imbalances that could be going on or things in your diet that could be contributing and making things that normally wouldn't seem as stressful, more stressful. So um, just a quick uh, recap, just a quick overview of, of me and my background. So my her brother has autism. I was always looking for ways to be able to help him. And that's actually what led me to become an naturopathic doctor, an acupuncturist. And then I did my training through the Medical Academy of Pediatric Special Needs. Um, so I've been in clinical practice for nine years. I treated hundreds of children with autism. Uh, typically takes about six to eight weeks to get in to see me, and I do have um, some patients uh, on the mainland or international patients as well. So um, this is my brother when he was a little baby, and I was always just looking for answers on how to be able to help him. Um, and so this is him many years later. Um, he graduated from high school. So um, he was able to graduate from high school uh, with a diploma here in his Eagle Scout. Um, he did a certificate at Windward Community College. And then he's been working in food service for over 17, over 17 years now. So um, this is just a quick overview. This isn't really the subject of our talk today, but I found that treating the underlying causes in autism can often really help a lot with um, the symptoms and manifestations of autism. So food allergies, sensitivities, issues with the gut, the brain, um, problems with liver detox, immune system problems. Um, 
But today we're going to be learning, or I'm going to be talking about some natural remedies that are often helpful for stress and anxiety, um, nutrition that's important for stress and anxiety, possible underlying medical causes, and I'm going to share as much as I can uh, with you in the limited time that we have today, but then I'll show you how to take this a little bit further. Um, so what if there was a treatment that could reduce stress, decrease inflammation caused by stress, improve your sleep, improve your self-image, give you a more positive outlook on life, improve your focus and attention, decrease pain, and decrease tendency to addiction, reduce age-related memory loss, decrease high blood pressure, reduce symptoms of anxiety disorders, which include phobias, paranoid thoughts, obsessive compulsive behaviors, and panic attacks. And what if I told you that this treatment is 100% natural, 100% drug-free, it's free of negative side effects, and it's accessible to everyone, and it's free. And so, guesses in terms of what that is? Um, so it's meditation, which is, you know, I mean, we've all heard about that, but that can be extremely powerful. And that's some of the, the most powerful things I've seen in terms of long-term shifts for patients that I've worked with with anxiety. And I'm certainly not a, a opposed to pharmaceutical medications in severe situations if it's really needed, but um, there are so many other things that we can do to help reduce the dosage and the need for, for drugs. And um, so how do you meditate? So I'm going to invite all of us to just take a few, just a few moments and to get comfortable and prepare to sit still for probably just a few, just a few seconds or a minute or so. But if you can put your hands on your belly with me and focus on your breath, and then as you're breathing in, then have your belly expand. Have your belly expand and get bigger. And then as you breathe out, then your belly gets smaller. And then as you breathe in again, as you breathe in again, breathe in and your belly gets bigger. And then as you breathe out, then having your belly get smaller again. So this is just a really, really brief, um, short and quick and dirty intro in terms of meditation. Some of you may meditate, some of you may not, but I've uh, used this in terms of a lot of patients, and it's actually been studied also for cancer patients as well, and found that cancer patients who meditate have significantly decreased um, complications, less pain, less anxiety, better survival rates. And for all of you as caregivers, especially, you're in a chronic fight or flight state, really, with being a caregiver for a loved one with autism. So, um, you know, some of you may be thinking, okay, when am I actually going to even have time to try to meditate, <laughs> right? So um, waking up earlier, if possible, um, a lot of us are really tired. But when what I do is... Uh, actually, just right before I go to bed, I'll turn on a guided meditation or take a few minutes, put my hands on my belly, and just as I'm lying in bed, then I'll start doing some deep breathing. And a lot of these guided meditations can be really helpful, especially if you've never meditated or tried to meditate before. A lot of people are like, you know, I try to sit down and my, my brain just won't shut off and I just, all this stuff keeps going over and over. Um, so again, this link will be sent to you guys in the slide, but these are some of the 12 best meditation apps according to experts. And so some of these can be really helpful, um, especially if you have a lot of mind chatter and just turning on a guided meditation. I usually recommend that if you're first starting with meditation because having something to listen to can be really helpful. So, and some of these apps are free too. So that could be really helpful. These are just a few free online meditation courses if you wanna go a little bit deeper in terms of um, getting a little bit more uh, insight into that. To nutrition, you've seen like all the, our, our Simon packets, the ramen um, being cleared off of the, the shelves and um, 
you know, then then one of the things though is that in those in those regular ramen packets, the Simon packets, there's MSG. And MSG, what is it? It's monosodium glutamate. But most people don't realize that glutamate is actually a brain chemical that causes more excitation in the brain. So it actually can cause more anxiety <laughs> potentially. Um, also headaches, body aches, things like that. So um, you know, if you're doing ramen, I, I encourage people to make their own base, like we show you and um, putting some seaweeds in there and making your own base for the noodles rather than using those instant packets. Um, that's a fairly simple way to do it. Um, but then also some guidelines in terms of nutrition, fruits and vegetables, um, eating your breakfast that includes some protein, because especially if our blood sugar tanks, we can start to get more symptoms of anxiety. Um, feeling more weak or shaky. So eating breakfast that includes proteins, that could be as simple as a handful of nuts or having um, some sliced almonds in your cereal or eating some nut butters um, or having a, a smoothie um, or some quick breakfast ideas because I know a lot of you are really strapped for time. So, uh, so those are some quick breakfast ideas. Um, also drinking lots of water, uh, of trying to limit or avoid alcohol or caffeine, um, paying attention to food sensitivities, and then trying to eat healthy, balanced uh, meals is important. And then some specifics in terms of specific nutrients that have been found to be helpful for anxiety. Um, so probiotics, you'll find those in fermented foods. So that can include things like yogurt, and if you or your child has dairy sensitivities. Um, there are also coconut or almond milk yogurts or dairy-free yogurts, sauerkraut, kimchi, tempeh, uh, kefir, including like dairy-free kefirs, like um, there's one called kivita. Prebiotics are the good fiber and um, nutrients that you need um, for, the, uh, for the good bacteria. Um, let me see. Um, and um, also other, so some of the food sources of prebiotics, artichokes, garlic, onions, leeks, asparagus. Um, I don't have that much time, so I'll leave, I'll leave these ones to you that you can go over and read in the slides, but folate B12, uh, magnesium, zinc, you'll find a lot of these in a lot of vegetables, also fish, eggs, um, nuts. Oh, and then, um, Omega-3 fatty acids, you can get those in fish, walnuts, chia seeds, um, tryptophan. So serotonin is an amino acid that, or serotonin is a brain chemical that helps us to feel calm and happy. And tryptophan turns into serotonin in our bodies. So some food sources of tryptophan are salmon, poultry, eggs, spinach, uh, vitamin E, um, nuts, sunflower seeds, green leafy vegetables are good sources vitamin C, papaya, guavas, bell peppers, broccoli, strawberries. Everybody thinks about citrus fruits with vitamin C, but these other foods have a lot of vitamin C as well. Um, carotenoids, so squash, carrots, grapes, grapefruit, oranges, apricots, and then flavonoids, berries, apples, grapes, parsley, thyme, celery, kale, broccoli, onions. Um, it can be helpful to think of these in terms of what should I eat rather than what should I not eat. I'm trying to get those. And I know a lot of you are trying to get these foods into your child with autism. A lot of children with autism are extremely picky. Um, but the Sneaky Chef cookbook is a really good resource. A lot of times you could puree some of these and mix the veggie purees um, into some of the foods that they're eating. You could freeze smoothies into popsicles. So those, so those are good ways to try to get some of these nutrients into your child as well. Um, and then these are some of my favorite natural remedies for anxiety. So um, rescue remedy, L-theanine, GABA, lavella. Lavella is actually lavender essential oil that you can take internally. And there's actually some good research studies on using internal um, appropriately dosed uh, doses of lavender essential oil that you can take internally. Um, 5-HTP is an amino acid that helps you to make more serotonin. Um, Cystabil, CBD oil, Mood Plus, these are specific names of supplements. Um, one that I forgot to include in here is a Chinese herbal formula called Peace Pearls. Um, so I do have, if you want 
you know, some of these specific products because brands are really important in terms of um, making sure that you have something that is tested by a third party and making sure that um, making sure that they actually have what they say they have in there and that it's tested to make sure there's not toxins and other contaminants in there. Um, so I do have an online store and we have that link over here um, that you can click on. And then um, if you sign up for that, I can share with you the specific protocols and some of these specific brands and everything that I, that I recommend. Um, and then through our online store, you can also get 15% off of the retail prices, which is actually usually even cheaper than Amazon. Um, we do have to share the protocols individually with people. So um, I'll, we'll be sharing that with you within 24 hours of signing up. Um, and so, so, so I just also put an asterisk that some of these with the um, asterisks, you can't get those through an online store. Um, you can't get those through our online store, but you can call or email our office to order those, and you don't have to be a patient of mine to order those. So, um, yeah, so again, these are some of my favorite remedies for anxiety that can be very helpful. I also find these really helpful a lot of times for a lot of hyperactivity with our kids, and um, even some, some of these can be helpful uh, sometimes in aggression for those of you who have children who are violent or aggressive. Um, so those are, those are some of my favorite things. Um, some of my favorite natural remedies for sleep. Um, there's a homeopathic remedy called Coffea Cruda, which it doesn't make you sleepy. Um, it doesn't make you sleepy, but it helps to calm kind of like the mind chatter um, that can happen. And so um, both my husband and my son find that really helpful. Um, a homeopathic remedy called Calm's Forte. There's also uh, 5-HTP, which can be helpful. Um, melatonin, so um, the regular non-time-release melatonin can be helpful for falling asleep, uh, but if you're having trouble staying asleep, then there are time-release or delayed-release um, forms of melatonin that could be helpful for staying asleep. Uh, L-tryptophan is also helpful for staying asleep, not too much for falling asleep, but for helping you stay asleep. Um, and then another one, IUFOS. IUFOS is really more specific for if you have a lot of uh, high cortisol and a lot of stress that you're feeling um, right before you're trying to go to sleep and that's interfering with your ability to fall asleep. Um, and then some other remedies, Somcutin, CBD oil, and then Sleep Plus. Those are some other products that I like. Um, um, sorry, I'm just checking the chat over here. There's something. Oh, okay. Um, and then also there can be possible underlying medical causes of anxiety. So thyroid problems, adrenal problems, nutrient deficiencies, um, gut issues um, like SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or irritable bowel syndrome actually can be causes of anxiety, uh, chronic pain, hormone imbalances. So especially when um, there's, there's issues uh, around the time of, um, yeah, so there's a comment magnesium to stay asleep that can definitely be helpful as well. Um, so hormone imbalances, especially for those of us women around the time of your periods, if you're feeling a lot of pms -y type of symptoms, I, see, I tell patients that's common, but it's not normal. Um, so there are lots of natural remedies to help with hormone imbalances. Um, heart disease, diabetes, and asthma can also be under possible underlying medical causes that can trigger or cause more anxiety. Um, also, there can be cortisol imbalances. So cortisol is actually, so over here, um, between these gray lines, that's how cortisol, that's where cortisol is supposed to be. Cortisol is supposed to start high in the morning so that you wake up and you have enough energy to be able to start the day. And then cortisol is supposed to go lower throughout the day. And then when you're going to sleep, then cortisol is supposed to be low so that you feel tired and you're ready to go to sleep and you're relaxed. So this is an actual result from a, from a patient that I saw where her cortisol was actually the total opposite. So instead of starting high and then going low in the, um, in the evening, 
then her cortisol actually started low in the morning and then it went high at night and she was suffering from a lot of anxiety and she would wake up in the morning she was feeling totally exhausted had no energy and then at nighttime she was like wired and she couldn't go to sleep and no wonder so because of her cortisol so there are, there are specific remedies that we can use um, to help to address that imbalance so another thing are you all of us are pretty much worried about getting COVID-19. Um, or if you do get COVID-19, I mean, of course there are, you know, hopefully it's, it's mild as it is with most people, but of course sometimes there can be more severe manifestations of that. So um, I actually put together uh, a PDF sheet of some integrative considerations for immune support during COVID-19 and all of these are evidence-based. So um, there is research some of these are not studied specifically with COVID-19 directly, but um, some of many of these things have been studied with SARS-CoV-1, the different strain of coronavirus that causes SARS um, or severe acute respiratory syndrome. So um, I won't go into this too much because this is it's not really a topic of our webinar today, but um, I'm happy to share that with you. Um, so you can email us. Um, so I have our email address here, or you can text us. Um, I have our phone number here, you can call us to get that PDF summary. So I have specific recommendations and doses for uh, things that have been studied to help with immune system function, to help strengthen your immune system, um, help to be able to decrease a lot of the, the risk with some of these. So like a quick touch, touching on some of these, like vitamin D is really important for immune system function. And vitamin D uh, has been found to be more effective sometimes even than the flu shot in terms of reducing the incidence of flu and also reducing the frequency of viral respiratory infections. Um, zinc was studied with SARS-CoV-1, the, um, the other strain of coronavirus that causes SARS, and zinc was found to actually decrease the entry of the coronavirus into the cells of the, body, the cells of our body. Um, vitamin C, mushroom extracts, I find these really helpful in terms of helping to support your immune system. And then NAC, N-acetylcysteine, um, helps to decrease inflammation, and it's also been studied and found to help decrease the inflammation, the fibrosis in the lungs when there is a lung infection. So if you do develop pneumonia um, secondary to COVID-19 or just from another infection, um, along with whatever else that you're taking that's recommended by your doctor, NAC can be very helpful in terms of helping to decrease the inflammation and, and reduce potential inflammation, scarring, and fibrosis in the lungs. And then Chinese herbal formulas. So um, there, uh, there are specific Chinese herbal formulas that have actually been studied with COVID-19. And actually in China, more than 85% of all patients with COVID-19 which is approximately 60,000 people have actually received Chinese, traditional Chinese herbal treatment along with Western medicine treatments as of late February, 2020. Um, and so that's because Chinese medicine is incorporated into a lot of the hospitals in China already, and it's something they use a lot. And so there are studies where they've actually used traditional Chinese herbal formulas, both in the prevention and the treatment of COVID-19. So I have all of that in that summary sheet. So um, again, you can call or text or email our office, um, and then we'll be happy to send that sheet to you that has like doses and um, potential contraindications and, and everything with that. So today you've discovered some natural remedies for anxiety, nutrition, possible underlying medical causes, and then how to take this further. So just a quick story. Um, I had a patient who was a mother of a child with autism. She, I was treating her child, um, and he actually improved a lot uh, as we were working on these underlying issues with him. Uh, but mom had anxiety. Mom came to me, she was taking Lexapro and she wanted to get off. Um, so we did testing on her. We found out that she had imbalances in her cortisol. She had nutrient deficiencies. She also had food sensitivities. And then we found she had significant improvement with treating all of these underlying issues. And we were able to eventually gradually wean her off of Lexapro. Um, so my gift to you today, so um, I do often uh, offer a free 15 minute phone consult, um, but I've actually cleared off my schedule this week specifically to try to help 
people, especially with all of the issues going on with COVID-19. So I've actually carved out time in my schedule this week. And so um, I'm actually, for you guys, I'm actually offering a free 30 minute uh, phone consultation, which is a $200 value. Um, but for, for the free 30 minute Hi. consult, um, I'm asking that you call or contact us within the next 24 hours um, to book that. The reason is that we, you know, I, I did set aside time just this week in my schedule, but then next week my schedule um, goes back to normal and I have a, a really full schedule. So um, yeah, so do, so contact us. You can go to that link there. And again, these slides will be sent to you. Um, so you'll have that link. Um, or you can call, call us, or you can also text free consult to the office number. So we could set that up for you. So this is basically a free 30 minute session where I can talk with you if you have more questions or concerns and you wanna talk with me more about the specific health issues that you're having, um, then you can call and then we'll, we'll be able to talk about your particular health concerns. And then um, I'll discuss those with you and then coming up with a plan to be able to help you the most. So. Um, but yeah, do, do contact us. So um, I can enter that link if you want into the chat so that you can go there. So um, yeah, so if you can go there with me, then you can click on that link and then fill out that form um, to book a free consult or again, you can text and I'll, I'll put that information in the chat. So, okay, that's it, thank you. Thank you so much, Catherine. That was really great information and that's a very generous offer. Um, I am going to throw it very quickly over to Anissa at NAMI. <laughs> hey guys, I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna be quick, I hope. Um, so basically, you just go over our programs real quick. What we just what we do, we have support groups for people in recovery from a mental health condition and for family and caregivers who love them. Right now, we have some online. Um, we have a family to family course. It's an eight week course where you learn things like you start from the basics like brain chemistry, medication, and then you go on to like empathy, problem solving, and kind of how to navigate the system. Um, we also have our Ending the Silence, where we go into schools and we talk about mental health to try and change the stigma, and so kids know how to seek help if and when they need it. Um, we have our walk every year. It's a mental health awareness walk. We have lots of cakey activities. Um, it's just a safe space um, for everybody to be together. Um, here are some of the common stressors and triggers I got from you guys. Um, this is kind of... Uh, the stress bucket, as, as we call it, um, there's all these things that keep filling your stress bucket, but you have to make sure that you have faucets to let some of the water out, because if your bucket starts to overflow, you risk getting sick, injury, depression, mental health conditions, etc. Um, and for me, it's all about balancing. Um, there is a very big difference between self-care and self-maintenance, so make sure that you are you understand the difference and you're doing things to keep both. So like, shh. Um, one of the things that we focus on is in, at NAMI is emotional intelligence because um, you have to come to the understanding to realize that you can't change anybody else in their own behaviors, but the only um, power or control you have is to change your own behaviors. Um, so one of the components of that is coping skills, it's negative coping skills, so it's like self-harm, drug and alcohol abuse, et cetera. But um, we all develop defense mechanisms for lessons, logical coping skills are ways in which we learn to deal with various stressors. Um, so one of the things I like to share is really based um, because we have to integrate it into their day 
every day. You know, make if even just five minutes of their day to take the time to do this flower. So I'll show them to you now. So the flower breath is very simple. Um, and again, they seem silly and funny, but they work and you're going to remember them. Um, and so will the kids. So if like a kid is having a tantrum, sometimes they can't talk, but you can hold up pictures of these different breathings and point to it and start breathing. And, and soon enough, they'll do it with you because we all have these like mirror neurons in our brains. That's why when you smile at a baby, a baby smiles back at you. Um, so the first one is a flower breath. You just pretend that you're holding a flower flower, take a deep breath in, and then blow out the candle. Very simple, nothing complicated. The next one is a hissing breath, so you take a deep breath in, hiss out like a cat. Again, simple. Uh, bear breath, um, take a deep breath in, I usually do like a snore, hold it, and then release. Bunny breaths, they're fun, um, three sniffs in, and then one out. Again, very simple, very easy, um, because we have to start at the, at the bottom. Um, uh, another thing that I think is important is building your toolkit. So having something that you can go to or for kids, having a, a calming place in the house, a corner, whatever it is, where they can just go to calm down and de-stress. Um, for me, I have this like little box that I use, um, but you can use like a shoe box or whatever. And, and just the fact that I have it there, just the fact that I have this safe space that for me, when I'm feeling stressed out, it just, it, it takes a lot of weight off of my shoulders. Um, another thing is like, I say like an evacuation plan. So like, what, what should you do when you're feeling stressed? What should you do? You know, where should you go? Um, another thing is having like a support card. So knowing who to talk to, um, who you can call. Uh, a lot of the stressors that I noticed you guys were having were things that are not in our control. Um, so I think it's very important to um, take a second to maybe write down everything that you can control and then just focus on those things. Um, these are just different ideas for supplies for your toolkit. Um, I do it in, in like pretending that it's a first aid kit. So um, I go off of that, um, but I won't go into it very deep. Because I don't have very much time. Um, but also um, having things that are for your senses. So things that you can touch, see, hear, smell, taste. Um, I'll show you what's in my toolkit in a second. But this is like, like I have my two little cousins right now. And like these are just things that we do at home. There's so many resources. Like we'll do like a, I like the yoga for kids thing. And I do it with them. Um, you know, a lot of these activities, I think with kids, Right now, it's very important to fo focus on their social and emotional well-being because um, the other stuff, they can catch up with that stuff. But if they're not in the right social emotional stage, I used to be a special education te teacher. I taught um, sped preschool for two years. Um, then they're not ready to learn. And so if, if, if you're just, if all you can do right now is focus on their social and emotional well-being, then that's fine. You're th th I think that that's good enough. Um, but like... Kids learn from what we do. So we cannot just be telling them they need to do these things. We need to do these things with them, right? We need to show them that, no, I do these things to calm down too. It's not only for you. It's for me as, as, as an adult as well. Um, Samaritan Counseling Center is a great resource. Um, we've been partnering with them on workshops. We've been having lots of online workshops too. Um, if you sign up for our newsletter or if you go to our website, um, they're all for free. We just had one on... Um, on music and art, we created a mandala together, and then we sang a song online, and it was everybody felt really connected. There was lots of tears, um, and then this is just like getting help if you're not feeling uh, like you have enough. Um, but I'll just show you real quick what's in my um, emotional toolkit. Um, I have these like indigo dark colored glasses because they kind of, if I'm having a headache or whatever, they kind of shut shut out what's going on. I have a mirror because sometimes I do affirmations or self-talk. That's helpful. Um, I have this thing here that my friend Marianne made for me. It's like all these like different quotes that she wrote on here. So sometimes I'll just come and just read one. Like this one says, you're going to make it. Um, this one says, never forget how wildly, how wildly capable you are. Um, I have these like, uh, healing the mind cards in here. I have a, like a little journal thing. Um, I have an eye mask in here, essential oils. Um, I think, like I said, I think touch is very important. So I have like, this is a, um, 
um, a mushroom coral that I like the way that it feels, or I have like a crystal. Um, this is a Paulo, San Paulo, whatever thing that you, incense thing that you burn. But it, um, I think smell is very important too. So I have that in here. And then also like a fun little like card that somebody wrote me that makes me feel good, you know? So like just having something for you when you're feeling stressed out, it could be just like a little like little bag that has essential oils and, and maybe a piece of chocolate or something in it. It's, just, it's yours. It's nobody else's. And so it's unique to you. Um, and yeah, I think that's my 10 minutes and that's it for now. Thank you so much, and thank you to all. Who's another yard? I mean, who's another yard? Oh. Okay, I got, my my dog got out into the other yard. I gotta go. We <laughs> oh. My guy, sorry. We saw the kitty thing. Um, I'm not going to go through this, but I am going to email it to you. So I just want you to see it. I made up a list of things you can just click on to go um, to some of the things we've been talking about. These are all links to free yoga and Tai Chi um, places you can do at, on, at home um, online. These are meditation apps. I like this first one, guided meditation, because I am the worst about doing what Catherine said about trying to meditate. And then within two minutes, I'm making a list in my head of the things that I need to do, uh, making out my grocery list or, or a list of things that need to be done around the house or for work. So these are all free online um, meditation resources. These are just exercise resources, um, online dance and Zumba and CrossFit. Um, some of them are based here in Hawaii and some of them are not. Some of them are recorded videos and some of them are Zoom classes that you can join in. And then the last page are a bunch of apps you can put on your phone. These last two, Calm and Breathe, these are meditation apps. Um, my 21-year-old that has autism, we use this Calm one a lot and it's, it's really neat. It's like colors and you touch the screen and it makes you follow the colors and it just forces you to sit for a few minutes and breathe and um, it's a good one. And these are all workout um, things you can put on your phone. Uh, Kaylee and I have talked about how when you try to get your child out to exercise, sometimes they don't want to do that. But if someone else is giving the instructions, let's do this and providing the music and you can do that together, that makes it a little more accessible. So I wanted to share that with you. I also, before we go, want to tell you about a few things coming up this week on Thursdays. Hawaii Autism Foundation um, partners with Taka um, to do the coffee talks. Taka sponsors these coffee talks, which are parent support groups, and they've been fantastic. Any questions that you have or just support you need from other, um, for other parents, you can join in and you can register for those on Taka's website. And on Fridays, Hawaii Autism Foundation also sponsors a social group for people on the spectrum and with other developmental disabilities. And you can register for that on our Facebook page. So um, thank you very much. I will be sending out a copy of this video as well as all of the PowerPoints, all of the links mentioned, all the things you guys were mentioning in chat that will all go out to you by the end of the day. And um, I appreciate your help and appreciate you being here. And thank you again to our experts. That was a lot of great information. And I hope you guys have a great day and stay well. Mahalo. <laughs>